Nurse Theory's PowerPoint Presentation This is a requirement for NU211 Nursing Theories and Conceptual Methods. In this lesson, you will learn about the health promotion model and its influences on the health behaviors. You will also gain an understanding of the theory and how the theory affects its outcomes. I will also share my insights, critique the theory based on how it affects me and my profession as a public health nurse. Nola Pender's Health Promotion Model Let us first get to know the person behind the health promotion theory. Who is Nola Pender? Nola Pender is a former professor from Division of Health Promotion and Risk Reduction Division 2 at University of Michigan School of Nursing. Her scholarly expertise activity interests are as follows. It includes physical activity, adolescents' health behaviors, health promotion, health behavior counseling. Dr. Pender developed the health promotion model that is used internationally for research, education, and practice. During her active research career, she conducted research testing on the health promotion model with adults and adolescents. She also developed the program Girls on the move with her research team and began intervention research into the usefulness of the model in helping adolescents adopt physically active lifestyles, developing a number of instruments that measures components of the model. In retirement, she consults on health promotion research nationally and internationally. When it comes to teaching, Dr. Pender has been a nurse educator for over 40 years. Throughout her e career, she taught baccalaureate, masters, doctor of philosophy students. She also mentored a number of postdoctoral fellows. In 1998, she received the May Edna Doyle Teacher of the Year Award from the University of Michigan School of Nursing. She currently serves as a distinguished professor at Loyola University Chicago School of Nursing. With affiliation and service, she was a co-founder of Midwest Nursing Research Society, a trustee of Midwest Nursing Research Society Foundation, 2009 up to present, also a member of U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, also a member of Board of Directors Research America, President of American Academy of Nursing, and also a Midwest Nursing Research Society, and a member of American Nurses Association. With the notable awards and honors, um, she was selected for Portraits, Portraits of Excellence, FITNE Series, Volume 2. She also received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Midwest Nursing Research Society. She was Distinguished Contribution to Nursing and Psychology from American Psychological Association. Honorary Doctorate of Science degree at Widener University. Distinguished Contribution to Research from Midwest Nursing Research Society and Distinguished Alumni Award from Michigan State School of Nursing. Let's go to uh, Pender's educational background. She got her nursing diploma as at West Suburban Hospital School of Nursing and took up the Bachelor of Science in Nursing at Michigan State University. Took his, her, I'm sorry, um, Master of Arts with Human Growth and Development at Michigan State University, took her um, Doctor of Philosophy at Psycholo Psychology and Education at Nor Northwestern University, and took up 20 graduate hours in community health nursing in Rush University. What is health promotion? Have you ever seen posters in grocery stores or schools that advocate eating healthy or exercising for 30 minutes a day? Have you gone to your local hospital or pharmacy and seen announcements about in screening programs for cholesterol, stress, or blood pressure? These are all examples of health promotion. Health promotion can be defined as the process of empowering people to make healthy lifestyle choices and motivating them to become better self-managers. To accomplish this, 
health promotion strategies should focus on patient education, counseling, and support mechanisms. Examples of health promotion approaches include education and counseling programs that promote physical activity, improve nutrition, or reduce the use of tobacco, alcohol, or drugs. Before we go ahead to uh, the health promotion model, I just want to um, give my reason or my rationale for the selection of theories. The first one, it's its relation to my current position as a public health nurse. The reason why I chose Nola Pender's health promotion theory is because the thoughts, ideas, and perception on the model focuses more on an environmental aspect or in community health care setting. Health promotion is very important in community health nurses, nursing. It focuses more of a positive health behavior which I can find interesting to discuss with. It is our responsibility as nurses to protect a patient's right when a person is sick, they are unable to act as they might when they are well. The nurse act on the patient's behalf or support their decisions, standing up for his or her interests at all times. This can empower a patient while recognizing that a patient's values supersede the healthcare providers. Overview of the health promotion model. The health promotion model describes the multidimensional nature of person as they interact within their environment to pursue health. It defines health as a positive dynamic state rather than simply the absence of the disease. Health promotion is directed at increasing a patient's level of well-being. It also assists nurses in understanding the major determinants of health behaviors as a basis for behavioral counseling to promote healthy lifestyle. Evolution of Health Promotion Model In 1982, the first version was introduced as the promotion of optimal health supersedes disease prevention. Study results suggested the model needed an additional concept to increase its power to predict health behavior and its potential use in the development of the health promoting nursing intervention. In 1996, theory was revised. Nola Pender's um, motivation in creating health promotion model is at first a professional's intervening after the development of acute or chronic health condition. She believed that the prevention of health problems would improve quality of life. She was convinced that there could be savings in health care. She felt that theories focused on negative motivation and decided to develop a model focusing on a positive motivation. The health promotion model. Health promotion model is middle range theory in aspect. It identifies background factors and perceived perception of self that influence individual health behavior. Its main focus is on health promotion rather than disease prevention. The definition is expanded to include measures taken to promote good health and the individual perception of themselves and their lifestyle. The main purpose of the health promotion model is to assist nurses in understanding the major determinants of health behavior as a basis for behavioral counseling to promote health, healthy lifestyles. Health promotion model notes that each person has unique personal characteristics and experiences that affects subsequent action. The set of variables for behavioral specific knowledge and affect have important motivational significance. These variables can be modified through nursing actions. Health promoting behavior is desired behavioral outcome and is the end point in the health promotion model. Health promoting behavior should result in improved health, enhanced functional ability, and better quality of life at all stages of development. The final behavioral demand is also influenced by immediate competing demand and preferences, which can der 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 derail an intended health promoting action. Nola Pender has theoretical sources. The first one is the expectancy value theory from Fishbane and Adson, which says individuals are more likely to work toward goals that seem achievable and result in personal gain. 
According to the expectancy value theory, behavior is function of the expectancies one has and the value of goal toward which is one is working. Such as an approach predicts that when more than one behavior is possible, the behavior chosen will be the one with the largest combination of expected success and value. Expectancy value theories hold that people are goal-oriented beings. The behavior they perform in response to their beliefs and values are undertaken to achieve some end. However, although expectancy value theory can be used to explain central concepts in uses and gratification research, there are other factors that influence the process. For example, the social and psychological origin of needs which give rise to motives for behavior which may be guided by beliefs, values, and social circumstances into seeking various gratification through media consumption and other non-media behavior. The second one is the social cognitive theory from Albert Bandura. Individuals are more likely to engage in an activity if they are confident they will be able to complete it even with the presence of buyers. So the social uh, cognitive theory is also known as social learning theory. This theory is based on vicarious learning. According to the theory, behavior is learned by observation, imitation, and positive reinforcement. Role models facilitate learning in that individuals reenact behavior they have observed directly or seen in the media. The theory also suggests people learn by noticing the benefits of actions that they observe other people performing. Behavioral change is determined by environmental, social, personal, and behavior elements. According to Bandura, motivation and feelings of frustration associated with repeated failure behavior. Self-efficacy is needed to initiate change. It is the most crucial factor, while outcome expectancy is the person's evaluation that the behavior will lead to positive. Key concept of health promotion model. We have three underlying categories, which is the individual, behavior specific, and behavioral outcome. This is the diagram of the health promotion model from Noel Penders theory. Individual characteristics and experiences, behavior specific cognition and affect, and behavioral outcome. Let us first define the terms for us to be able to easily understand it. Under individual characteristics and experiences, prior related behavior is defined as frequency of the similar behavior in the past, while the, per the second one is the personal factors. Uh, it is divided into three, which is the biological, psychological, and sociocultural. These factors are predictive of a given behavior and shaped by the nature of the target behavior being considered. Personal biological factors include variables such as age, gender, body mass index, prenatal status, aerobic capacity, strength, agility, or balance. The personal and psychological factors include the variables such as self esteem, self motivation, personal competence, perceived health status, and definition of health. The third one is the social cultural. Include the variables such as race, ethnicity, acculturation, education, and socioeconomic status. So going to the behavior specific cognition and affects, we have perceived benefits of action, which is the anticipated positive outcomes that will occur from health behavior. Perceived barriers to action, which is the anticipated imagine or real blocks and personal cost of understanding of a given behavior. Perceived self-efficacy, judgment of personal capability to organize and execute health promoting behavior. Perceived self-efficacy influences perceived barriers to action, so higher efficacy results in lowered perception of barriers to the performance of the behavior. Activity-related effect. Subjective positive or negative feeling that occurred before, during, and following the behavior based on the stimulus properties of the behavior itself. 
activity-related affect influences perceived self-efficacy greater than the feeling of efficacy in turn increased feelings of efficacy can generate further positive effect so as you can see the prior related behavior is the attitude in the past and the personal factors this uh this based on the person so if the um person involved has a good behavior has a discipline towards the goal of reaching the health promoting behavior then the behavioral outcome will be good so let us first um, define the interpersonal influences interpersonal influences cognition concerning behavior beliefs or attitude of the others interpersonal influences includes norms expectations of significant others social support and modeling or a vicarious learning through observing others engage in particular behavior. So we also have primary sources of interpersonal influences or families, peers, healthcare providers. Situational influences, these are the personal perception and cognition of any given situation or context that can facilitate or impede behavior. Situational influences may have direct or indirect influences on health behavior. So, um, if the family, the fears, and the healthcare providers support the patient in attaining the health promote, promoting behavior, then it is an advantage for the patient to be on track in um, changing his or her lifestyle. Situational influences um, on this one can be. Um, a positive influence or this one is correlated with each other since family plays an important role in honing a child in promoting a positive health behavior so with the commitment to plan of action the concept of intention or and the identification of plan strategy leads to the implementation of health behavior so with the immediate competing demands low control or the preference which is the high control those are alternative behavior over which individuals have low control because there are environmental contingencies such as work or family care responsibility competing preferences are alternative behavior over which individuals exert relatively high control such as choice of ice cream or apple for a snack so um health promoting behavior is the end point outcome directed toward uh, gaining positive health outcomes such as optimal well-being personal fulfillment and productive living fenders meta paradigm the first one is person person is a biophysical organism that is partially shaped by the environment but also seek to create an environment in which inherent and acquired human potential can be fully expressed. Thus, the relationship between person and environment is reciprocal individual characteristics as well life experience shape behaviors, including health behaviors. We have the example the biological, which is the body mass index, with the sociological race, ethnicity, education, socioeconomic status, physiological, as the self-perception of health status and confidence. The second one is health. Health, in reference to the individual, is defined as the actualization of inherent and acquired human potential through goal-directed behavior, competent self-care, and satisfying relationship with others. While adjustments are made as needed to maintain structural integrity and harmony with re relevant environments. Examples are it advocates for health across the lifespan. It promotes a state of increased well-being. The third one is the environment. Environment is the social, cultural, physical context in which the life course unfolds. The environment can be manipulated by the individual to create a positive context of use and facilitators for health-enhancing behavior. 
So um, what we have here is where an individual spends most of their time, usually with the families and community, which plays an important role in honing the attitude of a person. The last one is nursing. Nursing is collaboration with individuals, families, and communities to create the most favorable condition for expression of optimal health and high well-being. It is simply just promoting a healthy behavior. So that's Spender's Meta Paradigm. Moving forward, we have the major assumption of health promotion modeled by Nola Pender. The assumption reflects the behavioral science perspective and emphasizes the active role of the patient for managing health behaviors by modifying the environmental context. We have the first one where in the individual seek to actively regulate their own behavior. It means that um, it, the person is trying to say, I mean, the non-offender is trying to say that each individual has unique characteristics and has the ability to regulate their own behavior. The second one is the individuals in all their biopsychosocial bio, bio complexity interact with the environment, progressively transforming the environment and being transformed over time. So the more the individual is exposed in an environment, whether it's safe or not, he or she continues to grow inevitably. And that's where learning starts. Health professional constitute a part of interpersonal environment which exerts influence on a person throughout their lifespan. So healthcare providers also plays an important role in building an interpersonal environment which can influence the patient's behavior. So the last one is the self-initiated reconfiguration of a person's environment. Interactive patterns is essential to behavioral change. Changes is always constant. So human being has his or her own choice in changing her environment for better health outcomes. So we're done with the assumption. Let's now move on to the theoretical proposition of the health promotion. So the first one is prior behavior and inherited and acquired characteristics influence beliefs, affect, and enactment of health promoting behavior. Second is person commit to in engaging in behavior from which they anticipate deriving personally valued benefits. The third one is the perceived barriers can constrain commitment to action amid a year of behavior as well as actual behavior. Perceived competence or self-efficacy to execute a given behavior increases the likelihood of a commitment to action and actual performance of the behavior. Greater perceived self-efficacy results in fewer perceived barriers to a specific health behavior. Positive affect toward a behavior results in a greater perceived self-efficacy, which can in turn result in increased positive affect. When positive emotion or affect are associated with a behavior, the probability of commitment and action is increased. Next is the person are more likely to commit to and engage in health-promoting behaviors. When significant others model the behavior, expect the behavior to occur and provide assistance and support to en enable the behavior. Families, peers, and healthcare providers are important sources of interpersonal influence that can increase or decrease commitment and engagement in health promoting behavior. Situational influences in the external environment can increase or decrease commitment to or participation in health promoting behavior. The greater the commitments to specific plan of action, the more likely health promoting behavior are to be maintained over time. With a commitment to a plan of action is less likely to result in the desired behavior when competing demands over which persons have legal control require immediate attention. Commitment to a plan of action is less likely to result in the desired behavior when other actions are more attractive and thus preferred over the target behavior. Persons can modify cognition, affect, and the interpersonal and physical environment to create incentives for health actions. So those are the theoretical proposition of the health promotion model. To sum it all, I have here an example. Um, divides, I mean, under past behavior and tradition. With the past behavior, 
cultural traditions and family tradition can impact a person's, person's ability to engage in health promoting behavior. For example, not eating fresh fruits and vegetables because you grew up not eating fresh produce. People will pledge to participate in behavior that they believe will produce anticipated health outcomes. So obvious and not so obvious barrier can hinder a person's promise to act on a specific behavior. With confidence and encouragement, confidence in one's ability to perform a specified behavior increases the chances of continuous participation of such behavior. People believes about their capabilities to perform a specific health behavior can result in a lesser amount of perceived barrier to such behavior. When a person receives positive encouragement concerning a behavior, they are more likely to feel confident in their abilities, thus resulting in health-promoting behavior and inc increased positive reassurance. So if the person um, has a good support system that will encourage um, herself or himself to have a health promoting behavior for example the encouragement coming from his or her family if that has uh, a good found if, if a person has a good foundation in um in in terms of the support system then he or she may acquire a good health promoting behavior so and, and also uh, positive reinforcement also plays a vital role in achieving um, the health promoting behavior. So with the acceptance by nursing community, I have divided it to practice, education, and research. With the health promotion model, with the nursing practice, wellness as a nursing specialty has grown in prominence in the past decade. Nursing professionals find the health promotion model very relevant because it applies across the lifespan and is useful in a variety of settings. The clinical interest in health for behaviors represents a philosophical shift that emphasizes the quality of lives alongside of saving the life. In terms of education, the health promotion model is widely used in graduate education and it is increasingly being used in undergraduate nursing education. In the past, health promotion was being placed behind illness care, as clinical education was conducted primarily in acute care settings. With the research, health promotion model is a tool for research. Pender's research agenda and others' researcher test the empirical position of the model. Many research reports use the model as a frame of reference. The health promotion, health promoting lifestyle profile derived from the model. So often serves as the operational definition of health promoting behavior. The model has implication for application by emphasizing the imp importance of individual assessment of factors believed to influence health behavior changes. So critic to the health promotion model, I uh, divided it on the simplicity, generality, empirical precision, derivable consequences, coming from Anne Tomey and Marta Alligood. With the simplicity, the health promotion model is simple to understand. The conceptual definition provide clarity and lead to a greater understanding of the complexity of health behavior phenomena. The various factors in each set are logically linked, and the relationship are clarified in the theoretical assertions. The set of factors which are direct or indirect influences are clearly set out in visually simple diagram that displays their association. In terms of generality, the model is major middle range in scope. It is highly generalizable to adult population. The research used to derive the model was based on male, female, young, old, and ill samples. The research agenda includes application in a variety of settings. With empirical precision, Model has been supported through testing by Pender and others as a framework for explaining health promotion. The model continues to evolve through planned programs of research. With the derivable consequences, 
the model has identified health promotion as a goal for the 21st century, just as disease prevention was a task for the 20 of the 20th century. The model can potentially influence the interaction between the nurse and the consumer. Pender has responded to the political, social, and personal environment of her time to clarify nursing role in delivering health promotion services to persons of all ages. But personally for me, uh, Pender focuses on health education rather than health promotion. But it somehow plays an important role in encouraging the patient how to promote good health okay and um based on the scope um the scope of the theory is limited to predicting and identifying health promoting behaviors without including disease avoidance as a motivator uh, for health behavior the model does not limit itself to a specific type of health behavior performed therefore it can be applied in a broad sense to many different things. Pender discusses many different settings the theory can be used, including the workplace, schools, hospital, but also in a broader scale, including health promotion within the family and in the community. So um, Pender's model is useful to the nurse because it helps expand their role to promote good health as opposed to just decreasing, decreasing the risk up for becoming an ill. The nurse goals are now aimed at strengthening resources, potentials, and capability for each patient, providing resources and education to promote improved health and better quality of life. So I have here an example of clinical assessment for health promotion plan. This is um, a case scenario for health promotion model. Like example is increasing physical activity. We need to assess the current stage of the physical activity, like um, pre-contemplation, contemplation planning, preparation, action, maintenance. If in stage CPRA continue, if in stage M, reinforce positive behavior, if in stage PC, reinforce benefits of physical activity and assess readiness at a later time. It is just a questionnaire for a patient for them to assess and promote good health. So, and the other one is the intervention, like the characteristics, interpersonal influence, situational influence. So, that's the intervention to address influences on health behavior like increasing physical activity. So I have now my conclusions. The first one is give, it gives insight into motivation of health behavior. It can be used in a clinical practice and research. It helps to improve the idea of illness prevention. So predictions and interventions are focused on positive elements of decision making. Behavior met motivation is suggestive of better health than disease avoidance. This model works well when applied to prevention. It can be used in everyday nursing practice, policy making, and research. And the modern health prevention is a growing trend that will hopefully further increase lifespan and quality of life for many people. So, for this one, that's my conclusion on um, Nola Pender's health promotion model. I have here uh, the references that I use in making this video clip. That's and that ends my report. And thank you.